Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amy Temperley, and I'm with Aging is Cool. And we're based out of Austin, Texas, and we do activities uh, for older adults to help them stay active and engaged in their lives. And I'm here today to do a little uh, educational talk on the new active older adult and why aging really is cool. Um, there's a lot of myths around aging um, and a lot of ways that we can uh, engage in our worlds as we get older to make sure that it's everything that we hope it can be. Um, if you have questions or comments, you can put them in the chat. Um, just click on the chat button and we'll be monitoring those and I'll be able to answer questions for you at the end. So let's get started. So there are, as I mentioned, a bunch of myths of aging. You know, one of the things that um, is always surprising to me is that some of the people that are meanest to older adults are ourselves, right? We have some biases about getting old that we um, have been ingrained in us for our whole lives. Um, and it's time to start flipping those myths and looking at aging as a uh, productive part of our lives. And it's something all of us are going through. You can't escape it, so we might as well embrace it and enjoy it. So myth number one is that old people are all the same. Um, and the truth is that there's more variety among old people than any other age group or older people. Um, as you get older, you have more and more varied experiences that make you even more unique than the person next to you. So when someone says, oh, you know, you've seen one senior, you've seen them all, that's not, abs that's not true in the slightest. We become more distinctly different as we get older. Um, our interests are different, our functionality is different, the way we navigate the world is different, and we have to take those things into consideration when we're looking at the way we wanna live our lives and the way we interact with people um, of all ages. The next myth is that when you get old, you will have to go to a nursing home. And I honestly, sadly, believed this for a long time myself. I, uh, early in my career, I worked mostly in nursing homes as a social worker. And what I saw was people who were very sick and frail and who had to go um, and need 24 hour support and care. But the truth is that care is getting better, that people are living longer and healthier lives, and that according to the National Institute on Aging, only 5% of older adults are in nursing homes at any given point in time. So it doesn't have to be part of our progress and part of where we go as we get older. Another way to look at this is that a lot of people, or not a lot of people, some people go into nursing homes for rehabilitation, but now because we have a lot better home services, we have assisted livings, we have retirement communities, there are other options for living um, that weren't there in the past. So you don't have to go to a nursing home necessarily. The next myth is that aging is depressing. Um, and research shows that the happiest Americans are the oldest Americans. There are studies that are done um, throughout the world on um, measures of happiness. And if you look at who are the happiest people in the world, they're actually people over about the age of 75. And this is a worldwide phenomenon. <clears throat> Part of that probably comes from the fact that as we get older, we have a better way of looking at the world, right? We um, reach certain parts in our age progression where we make decisions around what's important and what's not important. Things that once caused us anxiety may don't, maybe don't cause us as much anxiety anymore, right? We have a better sense of ourselves, and that results in happier lives. Um, so it doesn't have to be depressing can be wonderful time. As you see here on, on the screen, this is um, our members with Aging is Cool here in Austin. They're the most fun-loving, engaged bunch of people that I think I've ever met in my life, and the average age is about 75. Our oldest member right in the middle there is Gladys, and she is 93 and attends everything that we do. So it can be a fantastic part of your life, even well into your 90s. The next myth is that aging dulls your wits and inevitably causes dementia. And we all have a fear as we get older, you know, we hear about the rates of Alzheimer's disease and dementia, and we have this fear that we are somehow going to be impacted by that. And yes, that is a possibility, and the rates do go up as our population is growing older. But only about 10% of people um, get Alzheimer's disease or dementia at age 65. Those rates go up much higher when you reach about age 85. But there are lots of things that we can do 
to help maintain our cognitive abilities over time. Um, we actually have studies showing that there are certain pieces of um, our brains that work better as we get older because we have so much more information to go on. Um, so that accumulated experience and knowledge helps us uh, to continue to learn and grow and expand. That's something we need to focus on for the, all of our lives, not just when we're younger. We can continue to do those things. The next myth is that aging somehow makes you unable to adapt to new situations. And this one I could argue all day long. Um, older people have more resilience than any other age group. They're actually experts at being able to navigate change. You, you think about once a upon a time, maybe if you walked into a strange room with a bunch of strangers or a situation that you've never been in before, you would be uncomfortable. But by the time you're 60, 70, 80 years of age, you've been there and done that. You've navigated all kinds of new situations and you've learned problem solving techniques that make it easier for you to get through these. So aging doesn't make you unable to adapt. It actually makes you much more resilient and much more adaptable. I love this one. I think everybody, uh, lots of people know Betty White. I think she just turned 98 years old. Um, and you can see her quote here, I may be a senior, but so what? I'm still hot. Um, the research shows that aging does not necessarily erase your libido, that people can continue to enjoy sexual activity throughout their lifespans. Um, there are certain areas of the country, retirement communities, that have very high rates, this is sounds terrible, of um, sexually transmitted illnesses because they have so much um, going on, so many relationships going on there. So it's, it doesn't have to go away. It can be part of your healthy lifestyle and aging as long as we do things safely. Um, you know, your libido can be uh, your libido when <laughs> you do what you please. The next myth, and this is really impacting studies show that productivity tends to rise as workers grow older um, due to their increased experience, they're more dependable, they have better judgment than other um, age groups. We also know that workplaces that have more diversity um, are more productive and are able to be more innovative. So having people throughout the age spectrum from 18 to 85 is important in our workforces. Um, so there's a lot of movement right now to try and encourage workplaces to bring in older workers for that um, additional knowledge and skill sets, the special skill sets that seniors have. So the thing to remember before we move to the next stage of this conversation is that aging is not lost youth, but a new stage of opportunity and strength. Um, here on the left, this is Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy, we took to go do um, indoor trapeze and silks. Um, one day we took a small group of people and, and went to see how they did. Dorothy is 83 years old in this picture. Um, and that smile on her face came naturally. We didn't even ask her to smile. She was so um, empowered by the ability to do something different, to learn something new, um, and uh, just to sort of embrace that confidence. So I love this, this picture. Um, you can continue to learn new things and grow and stay as healthy as you want to be throughout your lifespan. It just takes a little bit of extra work um, and some thought on your, on your part. So aging has changed a whole lot in recent years. If you look back to your own grandparents and um, how they navigated the world, 
you know, maybe they sat in their rocking chairs um, in the evenings. Maybe you're, I think about my grandfather at when he was about 55, he seemed really, really old. Um, and that's not what aging looks like anymore. Because we're living longer and healthier lives, it has changed our entire society and the way that we look at it. Uh, people who are working, or people are working and contributing longer. Um, many of you have probably retired, gone back to work, and then retired again. Not unusual. Um, people are volunteering longer, um, serving on boards of directors, helping nonprofits, making an effort to actually contribute in their, their communities on a, uh, for many more years. Those who stayed retired, so say you retire at 65, you know, once upon a time, the lifespan was 75. And so maybe you only had about 10 years that you needed to fill. Right now, with the um, longevity numbers pushing well up into the 90s, um, they are expecting that um, this next generation easily will live to be 100 plus. And there's even talk that um, the first person that will live to be over 130 years old um, is probably already born. If you retire at 65 and you've got to 100 or 135 as your lifespan, that's a lot more years to think about. We don't want to be sitting down in our rocking chairs. We want to figure out how we can continue to embrace our world and have a quality of life, not just quantity. Our health is allowing us to be much more active. You can still, you know, many people can still get out and go, can still um, participate in physical activities or be driving or be out in the world longer. Um, so health span, not only is our lifespan increased, but our health span has increased. So Ashton Applewhite, she's an author. She's written um, a book around ageism, and I, I really like her work. She said, Chr chronological age is an increasingly unreliable benchmark of pretty much anything about a person. So your age really doesn't matter. If you um, are healthy, you can be healthy at any age, and you can be unhealthy at any age. You can be active at any age or inactive at any age. So your age really doesn't have anything to do with it. So we're all individuals, our experiences are individual, and we have a lot more opportunities to create the world that we want than we ever did before. So with that said, how in the world do we navigate this? How do we age successfully? Um, Aging is Cool has done a lot of research over the years as to you know, what are those key things to active aging? What's really important? And these five things on the screen are the ones that come out over and over and over again. The first one is physical activity. The second, cognitive stimulation. The third, meaning and purpose. The fourth, social interaction and relationships. And the last one is gratitude, acceptance, and humor, or basically your attitude. So we're going to look at each one of these independently. So when we talk about physical activity, you know, back in the day when you thought about exercise, you thought about, um, let's see, Jane Fonda workout. You thought about maybe Olivia Newton-John workout. That was kind of my generation. Um, you think about going to the gym or lifting weights. Um, and the reality is that the way to look at physical activity is just about movement. It's about moving your body in any way that you can. If you look at countries around the world where um, people have to walk to the grocery store or they, they uh, don't have elevators in their buildings, they have a lot better um, health than we do in the United States. Um, these are called the blue zones. There are also areas where their diet is slightly different, but they do live longer. They tend to live well over 100 years old. And part of the physical activity that keeps them healthy is the fact that they just walk or move. Um, right now, a lot of us, if we're being you know, socially isolated by the virus, are probably spending a whole lot of time sitting in our chairs. And I, for one, am very, very guilty of this. And you know, one of the best things you can do is set a little timer and get up. Just get up once an hour and walk around your dining room table. Walk up and down your living room five times. 
Um, maybe you do it while a commercial is on your favorite show is to get up and stretch and move your arms around. Uh, my mother has taken to um, walking up and down in the kitchen while her food is in the microwave. That means she gets five minutes of actually moving her body. So it doesn't have to be strenuous. For increased health, we do, though, however, need to push ourselves a little bit. Um, and some ways to think about it, there's fitness classes um, in local communities. Right now, if, again, if you are homebound um, with the virus, there are tons and tons of videos yoga, strength building, tai chi, dance classes, amazing stuff online, most of which you can find for free. So check out YouTube and um, just Google free fitness classes online. You'll be able to find a ton of things. Um, we need to think about weight bearing a little bit, particularly women. It helps with our bones. So thinking about, you know, if you're going to be doing some arm movements, um, pick up a couple of cans of peas, uh, you know, find something a little heavier. And then get creative. Um, physical activity can get boring. You know, you might find something you like for a little while and then it's not any fun anymore. So try a little bit of yoga. It can be done seated or standing. Uh, tai Chi, also seated and standing. Dance, seated and standing. There are options, even for those who may have disabilities. Um, I have a very bad back problem, um, multiple surgeries, and I can't do regular yoga. So I do chair yoga. Works fine for me. Um, if I do the other kind of yoga, I can't get off the floor. So uh, find the thing that helps you adapt. Um, you'll see the last two here, indoor rock climbing and trapeze skills um, or silks. We, uh, these are just a couple of fun activities we've actually taken older adults to go and do. So don't doubt um, that you could try something new. It might have to be adapted a little bit for you. Um, you might want to be very more mindful of your safety, but um, there are other fun things that you can try. The final thing I want to say about physical activity is to really be focused on your balance as well. Um, falls prevention is a huge issue in older adults. Um, so be thinking about strengthening your ankles, your feet, your knees. Um, a very simple activity that you can do that's supposed to help with your balance and, and is supposed to be really one of the best things that you can do is kind of um, sitting on the edge of a chair and then standing up without using your hands, sitting back down, standing up again, and seeing how many of those you can do in a 30 second time period and trying to increase that over time. That's gonna help with your balance and your strength and it's gonna help with some fall preventions as well. So just be, um, just move, move in all the ways that you can. Just find ways to move your body. So the second one is cognitive activity. Um, up until recent years, people thought that when you lost a brain cell, that was it, it was gone forever, you couldn't create a new one. End of story. And we're learning so many new things about the brain that we never knew before. Um, and the good news is, is what they're finding out is that you can continue to create brain cells your entire life. And these are some of the ways that you can do that. So socialization is probably the number one thing you can do for cognitive activity. And unfortunately, that's really hard right now. We understand that um, with the virus and people having to be at home. Um, but when you think about talking to someone else and interacting with them, you're looking in their eyes, you're listening to their words, you're um, processing what they're saying, you're developing a response, and then you're responding to them. And the whole time you're watching their body and their micro expressions and, and what their facial expressions are. And this is one of the best things that you can do for your brain. So one of the big concerns that we're seeing is that um, social isolation is actually causing problems with people's cognitive abilities. So we need to be sure to be having interaction with other people People as much as we possibly can. The next thing is to try and do something new with your brain. So many people talk about how they love crossword puzzles or Sudoku. Those are fabulous. If you enjoy it, keep doing it. But the truth is, is that once your bot, your brain knows how to do something, um, it is, um, it's not learning anymore, right? If you know how to do a crossword puzzle or you know how Sudoku works, your brain has already worked out the mechanism of that. So yeah, it's still good for you, um, but it's not actually helping your brain go to the next level. So think about doing something different. 
learn a new skill, uh, take a class online, um, dance, you know, find things, uh, take a dance class, you know, find ways to learn something new. Um, the other thing you can do, and these are just really simple, is just do regular things differently. So if you're left-handed, brush your teeth with your right hand. If you drive the same way to church on a Sunday, go the opposite direction. Um, navigate the grocery store in reverse. I mean, doesn't that make you feel uncomfortable? And it's because your brain likes patterns and we have to throw our brain out of those patterns in order to learn something new and to increase the brain power. Uh, cross body movements can help with rewiring. Um, being any exercise or dance move where your, um, your arms or your legs kind of go across the midline of your body can actually help with rewiring. So it's about crossing over. Exercise, going back to the exercise again, even briefly exercising for 20 minutes um, facilitates information processing and memory function. It helps with um, your oxygen levels, it helps with the blood flow, and your brain relies on both of those in order to function well. And then the last two, we hear these all the time, eat right um, and get enough sleep and reduce stress. And again, I know those kinds of things can be difficult right now um, in the situation that we're in, um, but they're very, very important. So um, if you need to exercise to reduce your stress or make you a little tired before bedtime, do whatever you need to do so that you can do that. It's good for your brain. It has to rest as well. Meaning and purpose um, has been kind of a new piece that we've been researching later. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to be physically and mentally healthy, but we all need a reason to be. We all need a reason to get up every morning, um, a way to um, feel like we're a part of the world, um, to feel like there's some joy in our, in our universe. And so, we at Aging is Cool have been thinking a lot more around, you know, how do you bring meaning into your own life? And these are just a few things that you could consider. You know, the first one is self-actualization, which is how do I become a better person? You know, maybe you read self-help books or you listen to podcasts or you, um, you know, learn about others in a way that helps you be a better person. Um, the second would be spirituality and religion, you know, whatever that means to you, um, whatever feels um, fulfilling and whole. Maybe it's uh, being out in nature. Maybe it is going to church on Sundays or going to your synagogue. Um, finding that thing around something bigger than you um, that makes it all worthwhile. The next one is giving back. Um, I truly believe that older adults can be a, um, a mechanism for change in the country in terms of giving back, whether that's volunteering hands-on with children, whether it's serving on boards of directors and, and giving your knowledge base, serving as mentors to youth. There's so many ways that that can be done. And we're even finding that if you get creative, there are lots of ways to volunteer from home as well. So if you're um, if you have a disability and you're unable to get out, um, that can often cause depression. A great way to alleviate that is to help somebody else, right? To think beyond yourself. Um, and there are plenty of volunteer tasks that you can do at home. There's actually, um, oh gosh, I think it's called Love Letters uh, online, where they will give you the name and address of someone who needs basically some um, positive messages. And you can write them letters and cards and send them, you know, a thoughts of goodwill and let them know that someone's thinking of them. Um, just those little things can change how you feel um, and give you a reason to get up in the morning. And then employment. Lots and lots of older people going back to work. Um, at Aging is Cool, 75% of our staff are over age 65. Um, most of them are retired. They're people who wanted to come back and teach and use their skills and um, have a little mad money on the side or supplement Social Security. Uh, so don't, don't discount that one either. You don't have to work full time. You could work maybe just a few hours a week if that made you feel uh, like you had a sense of purpose. Social interactions and relationships. Um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier when I was talking about brain health, um, but loneliness and isolation are considered the new health crisis for older adults. Um, being isolated is the health equivalent of smoking a half a pack of cigarettes each day. 
a half a pack of cigarettes each day. And most of us know better than that, right? Um, loneliness and isolation not only can impact our cognitive ability, it can cause us to be less mobile. Um, it can cause us to not eat well. Um, your attitude and your mood can actually impact your DNA. Um, there's some interesting studies around that. Um, so it's a health crisis. So we have to find ways to interact with people all the time. Um, and, you know, in a normal world where we can get out and uh, be among other people and hug and touch and, you know, spend time together, that maybe isn't so hard. It's additionally hard right now. But that means we need to be even more diligent in um, picking up the phone and calling family members, maybe learning to use new technologies like you're, you know, are today, Facebook Live, um, Zoom, other technologies that let you actually see and interact with people. Um, it is going to be so, so important to all of our health, not just older adults, as we go forward. This is a huge um, problem during this time period. Here's some other thoughts when we do get back to uh, regular life. Um, meetup.com is a really great website where you can go and you basically type in your interests. So your interest is stamp collecting or hiking or gardening or birds, whatever that thing may be. Um, there will most likely be um, meetings in your community of people with similar interests. Um, my husband is English and we looked up English expats on meetup.com a few years ago and found a group of, of English expats that live here in our area and started you know, getting together with them for coffee and have made some really great friends through that. So um, dating sites, you know, you're not too old if you want to, to find a partner. There are dating sites that actually um, tailor to older adults. Of course, senior centers, um, there are great activities out there, as well as your local parks and recreation centers often have congregate meals going on, other sites uh, or other sites similar to that. Your faith-based congregations, and then of course, aging is cool. We have an online program going on right now during, uh, during the pandemic. So attitude can actually impact your health as well. Um, these are just some really interesting studies that have been done. Um, People who show hostility toward others have more cardiovascular disease, metabolic disease, and die at younger ages. So that says a lot for um, having a more um, accepting, loving framework of the world, trying to look at things as positively as you can. Um, I mentioned earlier that your mental patterns could also be harming essential parts of your DNA. And I, I'm not going to try and explain this study to you. I'll let you get on the internet and find it. But there has been a study that indicated that people with a poor attitude are actually showing increased um, unraveling of the, their telomeres, which are the little end caps on your DNA that keeps it from unraveling. And as it starts to unravel, it it increases aging basically so it could be your attitude don't quote me on all that I'm not a physician but definitely go look at that, <laughs> that research study um, and illness tends to progress faster for pessimists I mean how many of us have known um, people with cancer or traumatic illnesses who just through a positive attitude have been able to um, get through their illness in a much more um, positive way and the last one is gratitude, acceptance, and humor. Um, all really key for getting through our lives, no matter your age. Um, we have to accept that aging is a normal part of life and start, stop fighting it, start embracing that this is who we are and that there are things about us that are better now than they ever were before. Um, I just turned 50. I know I'm not quite in that 60 plus range yet, but I know that I'm more confident and I know that I'm wiser. I know that I'm way more patient than I used to be. Um, that's amazing. That is a result of age and I should be proud of that. Um, embrace the parts of you that were better that are better than they were years before. As I mentioned, those are some of mine. Find something to be thankful for every day. There's been a lot of research on gratitude and what gratitude can do for you and your mental status. And it actually, they've broken it down to, if you will just write down something you're grateful for three times a week, 
it will actually change your perception of the world around you. So just three times a week, they've even researched it down that far. Um, there's great books out there on Um, we all need to have some good belly laughs from time to time, but it's okay to break down and it's okay to just say, today I'm not okay with how I feel and today getting old is hard and today this thing hurts. Um, we, uh, aging is cool, you know, we, we like to say that aging is positive and it is something wonderful, but yeah, there are bad parts to getting older. Um, there's bad parts to a lot of life. <laughs> it's part of the part of how it was built, right? There's good and bad. Um, so just be sure that you take the time to grieve and do what you need to do and then step back up and find the things that you can do to make your life better again. And then the last one, just share the journey with others. Find friends, family, compatriots, neighbors, online buddies, whatever it is to help um, kind of share the journey and, um, and move yourself um, in a positive way through your life. So it's a, it's a good thing to have. <laughs> Aging is a good thing. So we've reached the end. And I guess my question to you is, what are you going to do um, over the next week to make aging uh, cool for you? Do you need to move your body more? Do you need to learn something new? Um, or do you need to just reach out and uh, talk to somebody and uh, make a friend? So I thank you all for joining me. And I'm not sure if Melissa's there to tell us if we had any questions. Yep, no questions on Facebook yet, but um, as I mentioned, and if you're okay with it, I will share your contact information so that all the viewers can reach out directly if they um, have any questions that come up after the live. That sounds wonderful. It was a pleasure to be with you all today. I hope you have a great day. Um, now get up out of your chair and wiggle around and move that body a little bit. <laughs> all right, guys, have a great one. Thank you.